Today I bring to you the much requested video on whether or not the police are allowed to search your motorhome or your boat home without a warrant. Anyone would be forgiven for being confused about this because the standard dictionary definition of premises usually refers to a house or a building, outbuildings or some other kind of business building or land that's associated with it. And if you watched my previous video on applications for search warrants, you'll remember that there's over 175 different statutory provisions for applying for a search warrant. So how this fits in with premises by itself might be confusing, let alone motorhomes and boat homes and things of that nature. But first of all, if you're new to me, I'm a barrister who helps you to understand law on this channel. I do live streams on Sundays and I answer your questions over at Black Belt Secrets, which is my other channel linked in the description. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on a standard Section 8 search, which is Section 8 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, commonly known as PACE. Section 8 provides, if on an application made by a constable, a justice of the peace, a magistrate, is satisfied that there are reasonable grounds for believing that A, an indictable offence has been committed, B, that there's material on the premises which is likely to be of substantial value to the investigation of the offence, C, that the material is likely to be relevant evidence, D, that it doesn't consist or include items of legal privilege or excluded material, and E, that the conditions in subsection 3 below applies. And subsection 3, which I explored in more detail in my previous video, ultimately says that it's necessary for the warrant to obtain the evidence required. But for more on the applications and the information required, I've linked that previous video in the description below. He may issue a warrant authorizing a constable to enter and search the premises in relation to each set of premises specified in the application. So it's this bit of wording that we are really interested in this particular power to search contained within PACE. And also whilst Section 8 does specifically relate to indictable offences, this includes either way offences because an indictable offence is simply one offence that can be tried on indictment. In other words, it's not a summary only offence. So for most offences that a police officer is likely to want to search a premises for, are going to be indictable offences. But as I said, the key wording that we want to look at here is that the warrant provides a power to enter and search a premises. So as with anything else in law, and I help you to understand the law on this channel, when reading this legislation, you need to look at specific words. And if you get a word that is particularly important and relevant to a particular section that you want to understand, such as the word premises, we might need to look elsewhere in the Act because that is very often and usually is defined so that we can better understand precisely what it is referring to. And sure enough, Section 8 also refers to what the premises are intended to be. But as usual with law, it's not quite that simple. But let's look at Section 8 first. Subsection 1A of Section 8 says that the premises referred to in Subsection 1B above are one or more sets of premises specified in the application in which case the application is for a specific premises warrant, or B, any premises occupied or controlled by a person specified in the application. Now, in other words, if the police have a specific interest in one particular location, they will specify that location, and it will be a specific premises warrant that they seek from the magistrate. On the other hand, if there is a lot more evidence and indication that this particular individual controls lots of premises that would contain evidence that is relevant to an indictable offence and so on, then they might get an all premises warrant, which means any and all of the premises that are occupied or controlled by that particular person may be searched by the police under that particular warrant. However, while Section 8 does specify whose premises a warrant application is supposed to relate to, and the word premises being a word that most of us should be readily familiar with, in other words, a house, a building, a shed, a garage, a office building, and so on. This doesn't necessarily help us as to the other questions which have been raised, such as vehicles, such as motorhomes, such as boats, and anything else that isn't readily described as being a premises in ordinary use of language. So as we very often find with Acts of Parliament, there are supplementary meanings sprinkled throughout the Act. Very often you'll find them at the beginning of the Act, usually with new legislation where all of these things have been thought of in advance and defined and specified at the outset so there's no confusion. In PACE, we can look to Section 23, which provides a little bit more guidance. Section 23 provides that meaning of premises in this Act includes any place and in particular includes any vehicle, vessel, aircraft or hovercraft 
any offshore installation, renewable energy installation, and interestingly, any tent or movable structure. So reading back to section eight, premises now includes any of your motorhomes, your motorboats, in fact, any vehicle, vessel, aircraft, and even a tent. So if you are out camping in a tent, arguably a warrant would be required under normal circumstances to search your tent. And the same application process for a warrant to search that tent or motorhome or motorboat or any other vehicle or vessel if the police so desire to search that premises as broadly set out in PACE. But as an interesting trivia and side tangent, tent does not come within the definition of a caravan, but subject for another video. Now it would be remiss of me to not include in this video certain situations where the police can enter a premises without a warrant, which as we've discussed would include any building that we would expect, but also include any vehicle, vessel, aircraft, tent, and so on. And for these, we can look to section 17 and 18 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. But also, if you want to understand these a little bit more with a bit more guidance, you can look to the PACE codes, codes of practice, and these for search and warrants are found in code B, which I will also put in the description below. And whilst these sections don't create or confer a power of arrest, section 17 broadly provides a power of entry to execute an arrest whether that be by an arrest warrant or for an indictable offence, by way of example. And naturally following on, section 18 provides a power of entry following an arrest. And as you might expect, there is a power to seize and retain anything found in such a search so long as it conforms with certain criteria. So all in all, not quite as confusing as one might first have thought with motor homes, motor boats, other vessels, other boats, other types of moving vehicles that you might be living in, or even aircraft. I personally know one or two people that have their own aircraft and have posed the very same question. And as I said at the outset of the video, there's over 175 different legislative provisions for applying for a search warrant. Looking briefly at TV licensing and the Communications Act 2003, it's section 366 that provides powers to enforce the TV license, and that section also includes a provision for applying for a search warrant. It's subsection two of that section that provides that a warrant under this section is a warrant authorizing any one or more persons authorized for the purpose by the BBC or by Ofcom, A, to enter the premises or vehicle at any time, either alone or in the company of constables, and to search the premises or vehicle and examine and test any television receiver found there. Two important things to note, although it's obviously not limited to these two, but first of all, subsection four provides that a person is not to enter a premises or vehicle in pursuance of the warrant under this section any time more than one month after the day the warrant was granted. In other words, contrary to a section eight search warrant, which provides for three months to conduct that search, this warrant is limited to one month only. And secondly, which arises from another question that has popped up in the comments, what if TV licensing under a search finds something else that shouldn't be there on the premises? Well, subsection five of section 366 provides powers conferred by a warrant under this section are exercisable in relation only to a contravention or suspected contravention of a condition of a TV license relating to interference with wireless telegraphy. But more on the specifics of a search warrant for TV licensing in another video, so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned. So I hope that video overview has been useful to everybody. Please make sure you take formal legal advice because you cannot rely on this or anything else that you read or see online. Legal advice must relate to your specific circumstances. So please like the video if you found it useful and remember, stay humble and subscribe.